Okay everyone, while we're still self-isolating, I thought I'd do tutorial number two. Now, number one, we did a bloomer, an English bloomer. Today, we're going to be uh, doing um, rough puff pastry. We're going to be making cheese twists or cheese straws, but it's essentially cheese twists. So, this is number two in a series of what I'm going to call baking bad, where bad means good in street talk. Um, anyway, so let's get straight to it. Plain flour. 200 grams of plain flour. In fact, 250 grams of plain flour. And we're going to sieve it as well. So let's zero the scales with the sieve on. 250 grams of flour. And it's always good to sieve it. So that uh, you have absolutely no lumps. So, 250 grams of plain flour. You don't need to use bread flour, you're not trying to develop gluten or anything. You're trying to do puff pastry or rough puff as this is. And you want nice layers. Okay, hooray, 250 grams. Swoosh that about. And you've got 250 grams here. This is slightly salted butter. If you're using unsalted butter, just use a tablespoon, uh, sorry, a tablespoon, a teaspoon of salt into, uh, into the flour. But I've got here 250 grams, which is one whole packet of uh, butter at room temperature. You don't want it too soft, you don't want it too hard, you just want it at room temperature. And we're going to plop that in here. I've also got here 150 millilitres of cold water and we're going to add that once we've rubbed the butter in. Now the thing with rough puff is that you want to see... You want to see bits of butter in the pastry. So with regular pastry you'll squidge the butter into the flour until it resembles breadcrumbs. Whereas with rough puff you want to squidge the butter a bit so that you still see bits of butter. So I'm going to spend a little while just squidging the butter into the flour with your hands with your fingers so that kind of looks all right to me what I'm gonna do now is put some of the water into the bowl and mix it up 150 milliliters in here we're gonna put about maybe half two-thirds and just stir it around until you get a dough forming. It's a bit of a palaver, but it's worthwhile. I might have got my hands in there a bit. Yeah, that's almost there. Tiny bit more water, I think. If you overdo it with your water, just whack a tiny bit more flour in. That seems pretty good to me. Just make sure all the flour gets some water into it. So it's just flour and butter. course a little bit of water and again you kind of do it by feel and that feels about right in fact I'm just going to get a tiny bit more flour on there. there we go splodge it about a bit tiny bit more I mean just a tiny bit more flour you don't want it too wet 
yourself is you're going to be rolling this out, okay? Good. So, there you go. There's your flour. You can see bits of butter in it, which is what you want with rough puff. You can see the sort of bits of butter, etc. So, that's all good. Right, we're going to cling film this up. There we go. And that's going to go into the fridge. That's going to go into the fridge for about 20 minutes. Remember, pastry works best when it's cold. So we'll be folding and rolling and chilling, etc. a few times. And then we'll roll it out, get our cheese in, and uh, get around to making the cheese twists. So there you go. Flour, plain flour, butter, and a little bit of water. As you can see, I haven't used all the water. So we'll plop that in the fridge and come back in 20 minutes, half an hour, once it's chilled right down. Okay. Okay, right, here we go. That has spent half an hour in the fridge and it is quite hard, again, with pastry. The colder the better, and as you can see, you can see the uh, Lots of butter in there. This is rough puff, not full puff. Full puff is a little more tricky. I might get onto that later. It involves rolling out an entire pat of butter into the pastry and folding. You have to be really accurate. Whereas this, you don't have to be so accurate. Right, these little shakers are fantastic for getting a nice even coating of flour onto your work surface. And then you can Flour your rolling pin a bit like this. There we go. Okay, out comes the dough or the pastry. And what we want to do is we want to try and keep a nice rectangular shape rolling out with the rolling pin. Nice rectangular shape. And keep it a kind of an even thickness. That doesn't look too bad. Right. Okay, so what we do, fold it down by a third like so. Now you see the marbling effect of the butter? This is what you're kind of looking for. And then fold this up by a third, like so. Turn it, and then turn it over, and roll it out again. Try and keep it all even. It's a little tricky at first, but uh, this is why this is a rough puff rather than perfect puff. But you'll get the same results. You can use this pastry to make sausage rolls, which are fantastic. You might get onto that a little bit later. But what we're doing is we're just building up layers of pastry and butter. So that when it cooks, you get this lovely lamination of layers. And you get that classic puff pastry. Now I seem to have got the consistency pretty good because I haven't needed to flour the surface anymore. So it's not sticking, it's really nice. Again, lots of lovely marbling in the butter. Not the most perfect rectangle, but you don't really need perfect rectangle. There we go. And then we're going to repeat that process. We're going to fold a third down, fold a third up, like so. Let's do it on the other side. And there we go. Butter and flour. 
beautiful. Right. What we are going to do is we shall fold that out one more time. I like to do this about three times. You get nice, nice layers. Tiny bit more flour from above, and I mean tiny. third and then a third like so give it a little roll like so good now what we are going to do is with my pre-cut piece of cling film is we are going to wrap that up <coughs> and it is now going to go back into the fridge for about 20 minutes, half an hour. Remember, cold temperatures are best for pastry. When you put pastry in the fridge to chill, it's always better to have a shape like this. Some people, they'll have a blob of pastry and they'll put it in the fridge and the outside will chill, but the middle will still be a little warmer and it won't behave as well as if you put it in like that. So in it goes. Right. 20 minutes, half an hour. I'll probably do half an hour. Right, now, in that time, we then get on to the cheese bit. Right, now, my favourite cheese is Gruyere. I'm a mi mixture of cheeses, 165 grams. You don't have to be super accurate with the measurements. 165 grams of vintage reserve Gruyere and some very, very strong West Country farmhouse cheddar. There's about 75 grams there, about 165 grams there. So all in about 240 grams of cheese. It's probably slightly too much or slightly more than you need, but that's the way I like to do them because the cheesier your cheese twists, the better. So, grate away into a bowl. Okay, there we go. Mix the cheese up a bit. Cheddar and Gruyere. Right, secret flavourings. English mustard powder. Coleman's English mustard powder. One generous teaspoon. In it goes. One teaspoon of Spanish smoked paprika. Beautiful smoked paprika. This is the one to get. Very smoky, very paprika y. And there we go. Plop that in there. Right. Cayenne pepper, just a smidge, that's all you need. It kind of has a sort of chilli heat to it, but it's a little bit more reserved than chilli powder and doesn't have the oomph. And so it just provides this very slight fizzy little tang. Right, and what we do is we just fold all that up, really. Gently, gently coat the cheese like so, so that it all gets a lovely coating of all of those spices evenly as well. And so long as you don't press it together, it will continue to stay loose and it will crumble a bit. And uh, there you go. Right, okay. Nicely chilled, rough puff. <coughs> Elevated clean filming skills. 
Just a little light dusting. The good thing about these things is that you get a really light dusting. Rather than a whole wadge. So here's our chilled pastry. Our chilled rough puff. And uh, the consistency of the pastry is pretty good, so I can't really see it sticking. And so now we are going to roll it out. And try and keep a nice rectangle as best we can. Okay, right. In with the cheese. So let's get one layer of cheese. That is a lot of cheese. Try and get it evenly spread out onto the pastry. Bring this pastry up and over and roll to kind of seal it in. There we go, just flipping over. Nice, very nice. <coughs> Try and keep a nice shake. Just get a little dusting of fog. Right out. And you should almost be able to see the cheese. Very small amounts of flour. That's nice, it's not sticking. Good. <coughs> right. Loads more cheese, all the rest of it, here we go. Probably a little too much, but it doesn't really matter a great deal if there's a lot of cheese. Let's just, just plop it to the sides, like that. There we go, okay, let's just fold it over. Kind of seal it down with the old rolling pin. Yeah, that looks pretty good to me. Mm. Lovely. Oh yeah. Mm. Just the taste of the cheese alone with those spices on. Small amounts of flour. Fold it over. Try and get some sort of rectangular shape. Cheese and butter squidging out everywhere, but it's kind of what you want. Excellent. It's not really a finesse thing that we're looking for. Keep it all rectangular because it will help when we come to uh, cut it with the pizza wheel. Kind of a good sign. OK, 
Okay, gently lift it up. Very small amount of flour, just to keep everything smooth and rolling along. Very nice. Right, okay. We may be ready, I think, to cut them all up. as even as we can get it for now. Okay, right, the baking trays. <laughs> I'm not gonna line them with baking parchment, they're pretty non-stick. We shouldn't have a problem. And then what we want to do, let's see, let's go from this side so it's easier for the camera. There we go, just roll through like so. One, two, and press them at the edges like so. Once you get into it, here we go, about half an inch, a generous centimeter. There we go. So, one, two, so you're getting this kind of a the look to it, you just press them down yeah these look nice so this will take a little while one two okay and we are going to egg wash these just on the top and you don't have to be very accurate really you're just gonna that's it just splodge it on each and every one cool I think we're good all round Right, okay, the oven is up to 180 centigrade and we're going to get these in for between 10 and 12 minutes. Now the best thing is because it's such a short baking time, you can just sit and stare at them through the glass and check them. You might get a little bit of uh, butter seepage and whatever, but just don't worry about it, just get them in. Um, I'll probably turn my trays around after five minutes or so to get that even bake thing going so that you haven't got really light ones next to really dark ones. And um, let's get these in the oven as quick as we can. Kaboom. Okay. We'll come back. Uh, Maybe in five minutes uh, when I spin them around, although you probably don't need to see that. Just spin them around after five minutes to get that even bake. Okay, right, moment of truth. Kung Fu oven gloves. Oven off. Let the burst of heat come out. Oh, baby. Here they are, fizzing away. Right, get them out onto the cooling racks, onto the cooling wires. There we go. Beautiful, as I keep saying. Look at that. Rough puff. Oh, they're so 
flaky and beautiful and gorgeous. And uh, good luck making them. My suggestion is maybe not quite as much cheese, but you know, it, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. Okay, our esteemed camera lady, the lovely <laughs> Rosemary, um, just couldn't wait. So she's uh, dying to have one with a beer, of course. You need a good Abbott ale. So, I'm trying to decide which one. But, you know, this one's calling out to me. Okay. Mm, they are really good. <laughs> mm. Yeah, it induces a laugh. That and a beer. Mm. Okay, folks. Thank you for Thanks. filming, Twinkle. And we'll be on to the next one. So they're good, yeah? They're good. They're good. <laughs>